Welcome back to another edition of the Seven Hills Resident of the Month. The spotlight here in July is on Mr. Mike Bender. Congratulations. Thanks for joining us here, Mr. Bender. We are looking live here at a calm now Calvin Park in beautiful Seven Hills, Ohio. And actually, that's, I believe, where we first met. Uh, Mike was a, a coach here for many years and ended up being a board president of the Seven Hills Baseball Federation. So why don't we just go back in time a little bit, talk about how you got involved in Seven Hills community events. Well, I moved to Seven Hills in, in 2000. I began coaching uh, my young, or my eldest daughter, back when I lived in Old Brooklyn. And they needed a coach for her seventh grade team. And uh, me and another guy walked up and, and volunteered, and that was the uh, father of her best friend. So he and I ended up coaching for years after that. They started an Emerald Necklace Charter out of Old Brooklyn. And uh, we did that together for a whole bunch of years. That was just a great time. And um, my younger daughter and his younger boys were, were kids back then. And we used to put the, the zero jerseys on them, and they were the bat boy and girl. So it was kind of a nice family thing. And mm -hmm. after we moved up here to Seven Hills, um, it was about the time my other daughter quit playing. And when was that time. when you moved here? It was 2000. 2000. So it's, it's been okay. almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we started playing up here in Seven Hills, and my, my youngest daughter went through the whole Seven Hills Baseball Federation program from T-ball to slow pitch at the end. And how about your years as the president? Well, that was probably a three, four year stint. Um, mm -hmm. you know, something that just seemed to come naturally. I'd been involved with the league as a coach and kind of always helped out and then took on various duties. So I believe uh, Greg Slepko was uh, president back mm -hmm. then when he stepped down. Mm -hmm. it, they'd been around it long enough and around the game and around different leagues long enough. So it was, it was an interesting bunch of years. It's a lot of work. Sure. It's definitely a lot of work for anybody who's involved in it to give it due respect to everybody who puts in that time. Right. And I know you've put in a lot of time. Everyone appreciated that. And along about that time when I met you as a coach and then you became the president and I would check the standings on the Seven Hills Baseball Federation website and I noticed Mike Bender's name on the bottom of the website, and you mentioned Emerald Necklace, the Fast Pitch Softball League, also your name on the bottom of that website. You want to talk about that? Yeah, that's kind of an interesting marriage of two things. Uh, I'm a computer programmer by day, I'm still a day job. And uh, back then, when I, when I was coaching for Emerald, the website they were using vanished. Suddenly they decided one year it wasn't going to be there anymore. And it was kind of some technology I needed to learn. Back then, it was new things. You'd have websites that were interactive. And uh, so I asked uh, Joanne, the president, if she'd let me throw something together for her. And uh, we put that up, and that site has been up and running now uh, for 19 years, yeah. 19 seasons. It so stood the test of time. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a neat thing. It was, yeah. it was a, so for me, it helped me learn some skills. It helped me advance my career. So it kind of you know, paid off for me. It was something I did for them for nothing and still do. But, it's a nice thing to have out there. Sure. And it's, Your it's name neat. Out there? Yeah, it's neat to be able to say, hey, look, this has been sitting here, and I'm, I'm hoping for one more year at least. It'll be, you know, uh -huh. I'll leave it up as long as they want it, but sure. it'll be 20 years next year. 20 year anniversary so, so it's, of it's the Mike neat, Bigger websites. Neat thing to have yeah. up there. I always know that uh, when I looked at them, they were easy to navigate, and, and I thought you did a great job with that. So we have community member, we have computer guru, but then. Uh, really, your secret life that I never knew about until my middle daughter started getting involved in the Cleveland music scene. Mike, you're a professional musician and probably one of the most busy musicians in Cleveland. So talk about that. Uh, music's been forever. It's, it, it's a lifetime endeavor. I, I started playing as a kid. I, my mother used to play piano, and, and she playing one day, and I said, "Can you show me how to do that?" And, she reached into the piano bench and pulled out this instruction book and had the little cutouts and she cut them all out, put them on the keys and showed the notes, put a couple octaves on there. And for, for a month and a half she was my piano teacher. <laughs> and uh, I moved on to other instruments after that and eventually landed on guitar, but it, you know, it started as young as that and was always interested. It's one of those things that no one ever had to tell me, go practice or go do it. I just enjoyed it and, and always did it and, Loved it. and pursued things and mm -hmm. to this day I'm still doing it. So you're involved in a lot of projects and have been, so talk about some of those. Probably I have two primary bands I work with right now. 
Uh, one group's called the King Bees, a group I got involved with after I graduated college. During college, I played full time. That's so how I made my living. And after that, I didn't need to, and, and I was going to work now. And I got with a, it was kind of a buddy band, just some guys I knew I'd known through school, and we got together and started playing. And how we ended up, this group's still together after 20 years. The people have come and gone, of course, but the group's still playing. We recorded a couple CDs with that group, and we play at all kinds of fairs and festivals and venues now, and we kind of keep moving along with that band. Other than yourself, who are some of the main players, sir? We got a guy on keyboards by the name of um, Scott Wilson, been a, a long-term member of the band. Uh, Reggie Red, our sax player. Uh, geez, Reggie's uh, in his 80s now, and he's still playing with two or three different groups. Mm -hmm. I give him credit for that. And we've got uh, Tommy Tucker and uh, Anthony Graceffo playing the drums. A lot of veteran musicians. Sure. Right? And uh, what, what other project? The latest project I got going over the last few years, we put something together. It stemmed out of a, a duo I do. Uh, it's a really great group called the Jam Machine. It's a kind of pop rock festival event, uh, private band clubs. We do everything, a lot of popular music. But it's just a great group of uh, a seasoned Cleveland players. So we got Don Kruger playing drums on that uh, and George Sipple on keys. George is a, grew up here in Seven Hills. Yeah. Uh, George yes. and Don. You know George well? Yeah. Those two played together in um, Eric Carmen back in the 70s. Uh, Don works at all kinds of groups, Rock Shop, Boku, they're kind of a first call drummer, Jonah Coslin for all, all kinds of people in town. Sure. And uh, a lot George. Of recognizable names. Yeah, George uh, was a member of American Noise, yeah. Gold Record producer, just a couple I of I still you know, have that, or it wasn't yeah. CD, it was vinyl back then. Still have that. But it's just a, a couple of great guys to work with. We got um, Scott Emerson from Schoolgirl Crush, mm -hmm. formerly on, our, on the bass right now, and of course, uh, Last but not least, Priscilla, and oh, that's yeah. how it all started. A great singer, worked yes. with a group called Guys and Dolls in the 90s. Uh -huh. uh, and her and I started a duo a bunch of years back, and uh -huh. the whole group kind of evolved out of that. It was kind of started off being a Mike and Priscilla and Friends show. Uh -huh. People were asking us for band work when we couldn't do a duo, and just a few guys fell into it, and they were very good, this group of guys, and uh -huh. they wanted to keep playing, so here we are. In fact, that group, the Jam Machine. Well, <laughs> we'll be playing at Seven Hills Home Days. That's uh, right. Saturday night, July 27th. We'll be right here in the neighborhood uh, playing for everyone. Up behind City Hall. What time? Uh, seven, eight o'clock we start. And I suppose we'll, we'll play until they make us quit and throw oh, us out. Oh, great. So. Okay. So eight o'clock, July 27th at Home Days, right behind City Hall there. Uh, Mike Binder will be playing. I've been to his shows before. It's always fun. Very interactive with the crowd. A lot of familiar tunes and, and some that you wrote yourself, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the King Bees, we do cover some few things uh -huh. that, that were written by the band members. So both, a lot of covers, but some originals as well. Okay. Sure. So as, as far as, you know, you have a lot of these projects going on, I mean, how busy are you? How often uh, a week do you play out? It, it can vary. I mean, it's, it's summer times with band players is always a busy time. There's so many great things to go out and see and play. You can go down to the islands, up to the wineries. There's fairs and festivals all over the, the area, depending on how far you'd like to drive. A lot of parties and events people have. Mm -hmm. Some of you tend to be a lot busier. Uh, so in the winter months, and it tends to slow down a little bit. So but right now is a busy time, right? Yeah, so it, it's a, a matter of how, <laughs> how far you can go without getting exhausted uh -huh. in your commitment. You could play every day if you wanted. If I could. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if I could lug the gear every day, right, I right. you get tired. But uh, for, obviously play for the love and being professional, it's, it's nice to have that extra money on the side, I'm sure, as well. So we've talked about the past, we've talked about the present. What, what about the future for Mike Bender? The future? Uh, musically, I would uh, hope to keep doing it as long as I can. Rock to you drop. Right, right. right. <laughs> as, long as, I can, like, as long as I can still pull some gear in and out of the van, I'll, I'll continue. Uh -huh. And that's what that. Got to get be. some roadies. Right. <laughs> I'm looking. Anybody out there? Call me. There you go. Okay. Anything else on the horizon or recently that you'd no, like to talk about? Living life and enjoying it. Okay. Great. 
Well, again, this is our uh, Seven Hills Residence Spotlight of the Month for July. Mike Finder, our second musician, actually, that's been recognized. We had Butch Armstrong back in April, and you probably have crossed paths with him oh, yeah. in the past. I think he'll be playing Home Days as well, but we look forward to that July 27th show at 8 o'clock. Certainly, I look forward to being there. For your efforts tonight, I'd like to present you with a souvenir, Seven Hills Hall of Fame, future Hall of Famer shirt. Those are worn you, by the helpers at our induction ceremonies, and certainly everyone who is a resident spotlight of the month gets the shirt. So congratulations. Thanks right, for being thank with you. us. And we'll see you around. All right. Good luck, Mike.